Good morning, my friends. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. It's camel day. And I'm your faith and victory coach, Anna Marie Strawhan. And it's so good to be here today. I'm sorry for the delay this morning. They changed my dashboard on YouTube. And now I can't find where the chat is. So I'm going to try and find y'all. Hopefully you'll pop up somewhere. <laughs> I call forth my peeps right now in front of my eyes right now in the name of Jesus. You are my peeps and I love you and I want to see what you're saying this morning and I'm trying to get to where I can see you. <laughs> Lord, bring them forth in the name of Jesus. Listen, guys, today. Oh. Oh, I'm your Faith and Victory Coach, Anna Marie Strawhan. This is Faith Lane Live with Anna Marie. It's Open Coaching Wednesday, Q&A Wednesday. I will help you today with Holy Spirit-filled solutions for your life, for your ministry, for your family, for your, for your marriage, and for all that God has called you to do. So today is the day that we really kind of dig deep into where you are right now and where you want to be and uh, how we can help you on that path and on that journey uh, and, you know, to the Word of God. And it's exciting to me because today I'm going to be talking about covenants. Covenants. Why am I going to be talking about covenants today? Because today is my 20th anniversary to my husband, Michael Lee Strawhand. <laughs> We've been married 20 years today, April 22nd, 2020. We got married in the year 2000, and uh, it's pretty awesome. But, you know, and we got married on, on a Resurrection Weekend. It was Easter weekend because um, I worked in motorsports. I worked in NASCAR, and most of the people I was inviting to our wedding were my friends from NASCAR racing, of course, friends and family. And every weekend... In the spring and the summer, they're racing somewhere. They're going on the road, traveling, and the only weekend that they get off is Easter. And so uh, Mike and I, we were trying to figure out when to have our wedding, and we, we, had, we lived in North Carolina at the time. I was still w working in NASCAR. I was still doing some traveling, but I was trying to get off the road because I knew right after we got married, uh, we wanted to try to have a baby, and... Um, I was 35 and Mike was 40, so we're exactly five years apart. And Mike and I are both born on March 22nd on Palm Sunday. Okay, all right. There is no coincidence with God, and that's why I'm going to talk to you about covenant. I'm going to talk about your scrolls in heaven, that your, your spouse is ordained for you in your scrolls in heaven, and God looks at covenant very, very seriously, and we're going to be talking about that with your, your covenants and taking a look at your covenants. But anyway, so Mike and I, we got married, um, on April 22nd. So we were going to, we were going to do March 22nd, but nobody could come. <laughs> it would be cool if we got married on our birthday and we got, <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been a little bit too much, a little over the top, right? It's still in North Carolina. It's a little chilly in March and we were going to have an outdoor wedding with a tent and everything. And I wanted the dogwoods to be in blossom, Ooh, you know, and all that. They're so pretty living in the South with the dogwoods. I might take a little walk uh, later up, up, our, up our driveway to the barn. Um, there, there's beautiful dogwoods. They're just so lacy, you know, just so pretty. And they're mixed with um, dogwoods and azalea, bright fuchsia pink azalea and white dogwoods. And you talk about gorgeous. So I might take a walk up there, up that driveway later. But Mike and I are, Mike and I are planning to have a little picnic later, too celebrate our 20th but let me tell you um the day of our wedding was hilarious maybe you guys have some funny stories of your wedding i don't know you know and and the, the, the holy spirit has got such a sense of humor he really really does at first i was like so upset that this happened but looking back mike and i laugh about it so we, we had this outdoor wedding and it was still a little you know chilly little springtime thing going on you know and it, we had rained a lot several days before our wedding so it was a little mushy and muddy in spots well we lived in a little old country house in north carolina in an area called iron station north carolina in lincoln county and it's kind of funny that God put Mike and I in Iron Station, North Carolina, just north of Charlotte, because 
Iron Station is where they made all the cannons for the Civil War. There was a foundry there, a furnace there. And I said, Lord, that's where you refined me by fire for the ministry. <laughs> I was refined by fire in Iron Station. And Mike and I became iron sharpens iron. You know, we're going to talk about that covenant and how your, your spouse uh, should be iron sharpening iron, according to the Word of God. But let me tell you this funny story. We'll open with a funny story this morning, right? So I wanted everything perfect, you know, and my sisters came down to help. My one sister, Lisa, from Texas, and my other sister, Marsha, from Syracuse, New York. And my mom at the time, she was living in North Carolina. And <laughs> all that mud and stuff. And we didn't think, we, uh, we invited about 100 so people to the wedding. We didn't even think about port johns okay? We were just like, you know, we got two bathrooms in the house, you know, it's a little old country house, but it had all been renovated. Uh, we were leasing it at the time. And we were like, okay, I think the bathroom situation is going to be fine. We didn't even think about porta johns Okay, my husband, Michael, at that time, husband-to-be, was a plumber, plumbing contract, co- plumbing contractor. He had his own plumbing business. Mike had a plumbing business called Performance Plumbing. Yes, I made up the name. <laughs> it's like, I need a name for my plumbing company. I'm like, Performance, Hello. I put, I took, took a wrench, I made a logo and I took a wrench and I put two checkered flags. (laughs) But anyway, I digress, but you guys know where I'm going with this. I hope, I don't know. So we had the most beautiful, amazing wedding, but right where I decided to have my arch for my wedding, you know, with all the flowers, I had a tulip garden there. And I, w- there was like a little natural hill there so that the people's chairs could rise up. And then Mike and I were like sort of a little teeny bit, at, you know, like at the base of that. And, you know, it was, it was just like this little rounded area. And that's where I had my tulip garden. And we put the arch there and there was just beautiful, you know, blossoms behind us. And It was a gorgeous setting. Well, during my wedding, the septic tank overflowed because people had been there for two days, hanging out, eating, you know, stuff, going to the bathroom. Guess where the septic tank was? (laughs) Right where Mike and I were, like, put our arch, right where... (laughs) Right where everybody was sitting. <laughs> and Mike was like, you know, it's a little mushy right here. A little mushy, you know. And everybody was trying to like, you know, it didn't smell or anything. It was just because it was so saturated from the rain and just, you know, everybody going to the bathroom. <laughs> it just started to get all mushy and smushy. And, uh, you know, that, I don't know if any of you live in North, North Carolina, you know, that Carolina red clay. Oh, my gosh. It was on people's shoes. They were taking the soil with them, let me tell you. So then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we said our vows and everything. And I knew the Holy Spirit was there because if you look, if we look back at the video of my wedding, we went to say our vows. And my my husband, Mike, you know how big he is, right? And um, we went to say our vows. My two sisters who were standing up for me and Mike's brother who was standing up for him, this gust of wind came. It was like that mighty rushing wind, okay? That mighty rushing wind. And uh, this gust of wind came, and it came blowing. It came around me and swirled around me and Mike. I've got it on video. And my veil, I had a really long veil. And my veil came on, and it went over the top of me and Mike. And that's something. And so looking back, you know, even though I was so upset about the septic tank, I knew that the Holy Spirit was there. So the moral to the story is you might, your septic tank might be overflowing. You might think that you've got all these problems and you're being overwhelmed by these problems and things are, things are going as perfect as you want them to be. But remember what the main thing is. The main thing is the main thing is the presence of the Lord, the center of your life. You know, and, and that's, that's just my word for you today. You know, you might see all these problems going on, these worldly problems going on. Maybe you didn't plan properly. Maybe, you know, your septic tank is overflowing. Your sink is broken. Your kids are running around crazy. Oh, you know, you, you, I mean, 
It's not going the way you want it to. All right. You're like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, it, but is the presence of the Lord invited in your home? Is the presence of the Lord, right? Who was in, who are you in covenant with all the time that, you know, no matter what's going on out here, all the chaos is the breath of the Holy Spirit, the center of your life, the center of your marriage, the center of your household, the center of everything. And it really was a lesson for me, you know, that, uh, this is what Mike and my, our life will be that there may be things that will happen and, and there may be, uh, you know, stuff beyond our control or whatever, but God, remember God is in control when, we, when you make him the center of everything and you invite his Holy spirit and you, you become in covenant with him and him alone. And so I, I remember that and it's just very comforting to me. And I wanted to share that with all of you today. So as Mike and I celebrate our 20th anniversary. I wanted to have another celebration. I said, honey, oh, I want to have a, uh, a renewal of the vows and, you know, have a barbecue and da, da, da. And he wasn't too keen on that. He's like, well, I did it once. And isn't it good? <laughs> yeah, that's my, my country boy. My, well, I did it one time. Isn't it still good? <laughs> and it taught me a lesson. You know, once in covenant, always in covenant. And you can go and reinstate your covenant just before God, because that's all that matters. The Holy Spirit will be your witness. Jesus Christ will be your witness. So if you can't have the big wedding and if you can't have all this, woo, you know, uh, pomp and circumstance, right? As long as you invite the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ is your advocate and you say your vows before God and you come in covenant with God, with your marriage, you come in covenant with God, with your children, you come in covenant with God, with your, your family and your ministry and your business. You're good. You're good. And we're going to talk about covenants and we're going to have you look at what covenants you've been in. And I'm going to teach you how to break off ungodly covenants today and then reinstate your covenants with God and God alone. And I have a prayer that I'm going to share with you. It's very powerful. So, uh, that's my funny, uh, septic tank overflowing story with a, a, a word for all of you to bless you all today. <laughs> So good morning, my peeps. I hope you have a nice hot cup of amen and woohoo this morning. Mm. You can get these official uh, coffee mugs uh, on my website by becoming a partner of Anna Marie Strohan Life in the Faith Lane TV. We've got amazing partnerships. You get all kinds of swag. And uh, you get on my mentoring calls, okay? And if you become a third-level partner, you can mentor with me privately, one-on-one. -on -one. So go to annemariestrohan.com. Check out our faith partners. Uh, I'm getting ready to put a whole new order in for these uh, mugs and other great stuff, okay? And on our 20th anniversary, Mike and I, we are launching a business that we will be dedicating to God something that's why you know you get a word from god i got i got a word from the lord that that uh god would give uh mike a business that was a while ago you know some things don't happen immediately you got to be patient but the lord will do it and we got to step out in faith you got to step out in faith so mike and i are launching a business called the big biscuit company live life large my husband is uh six foot five almost 300 pounds and I'm five foot three, but I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is just a prototype of the t-shirt and we're getting more t-shirts made right now. The website is getting ready to go. The uh, big biscuit.co and my husband's funny sayings are going to be on the back cause he's a country boy. And, uh, the first, the first saying that we're going to be selling is don't talk about it. Just make the biscuits. <laughs> So we're going to have all kinds of funny sayings and it's going to, uh, you know, help Mike and I uh, build the ministry and what call, do what God's called us to, uh, to build. And it's going to be, this company is a, going to be a full partner of Life in the Faith Lane TV. The Lord, the Lord will, you know, he always brings you into exactly 
what is written in your scroll, what he's called you to do when you are in complete and total covenant with him. All right. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about covenants with God. Here, here's a picture of me and Mike and our, our wedding. I don't know if y'all can see that. <laughs> that's, that's just, we were actually getting our wedding pictures and the septic tank had already overflowed. <laughs> I saved my little crown. I don't know you can guys see the little crown on my head. I saved that for my daughter because the bottom of my dress was all stained with the red clay and the bottom of my veil had gotten stained and my shoes gotten stained at, um, so, and I took it to a cleaner. So they put all kinds of chemicals on it and messed it up. So I was able to save the crown. You guys have seen me wear that crown, my bridal crown and my Esther video here. I did. And um, it says the two, what does it say? Let me, let me get my glasses on. I put scripture on this. I like to be very, make things with, with lace and ribbons and stuff. And the ribbon, the ribbon is off my bridesmaids, my sister's bouquets. And the lace is off of um, some decorations I had at the wedding. And it says, they are no longer two, but one. And I think it's Matthew. I can't see, but. But anyway, there it is. We are no longer two, but one. We were brought into covenant. God loves covenants and he loves to be, he loves a covenant of marriage. He loves to be in covenant with you. We, we're going to talk about that and how when you uh, get into covenant with God, he will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. And so that's just bef- just after the septic tank overflowed. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit was there. He came in like a mighty rushing wind and even where my veil swirled around. I'll have to find the video and make a clip of that. And uh, the main thing is the main thing, friends. You got to get your eyes off the problem and get your eyes on where God is in your life. That's the main thing. Okay. All right. So how's everybody doing today? I want to try and find where you guys are chatting. YouTube has changed my dashboard <laughs> and i don't know where the live stream is where are you Woohoo! where are you my peeps peep 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 pretty peep, peeps oh show me where you are okay wait i think i found you i think i found you hold on oh please open up so i can see the chat all right it says i'm streaming live but where is the chat? Da da da. Where are you? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, it's got a little icon next to it now. It says "View Live in Dashboard." Yes, I found it. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Okay, I'm back to the dashboard where I can see you guys chatting. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Don't you love it when you just figured out how some kind of software works, then they change it on you? (laughs) Are you like, where is everything? Good morning, Picarillo, my wonderful moderator. Good morning, Poochie Lou, my wonderful moderator. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to the broadcast. Welcome, my peeps. Thank you for the happy anniversary wishes. Mike and I are going to make a video later for our Big Biscuit. We're going to put on our Big Biscuit T-shirts and announce our business. And I want this for all of you. I want this for, for you and your households. And if you're not married yet, it's okay. The Lord has your spouse already ordained for you in your scroll. We're going to talk about covenants today. We're going to talk about being in covenant with marriage. We're going to be talking about being in covenant with business. We're going to talk about being in covenant with ministry. We're going to talk about uh, giving your children to God in covenant. We're going to talk about why covenants are so important to God and why he blesses those who are, who are in covenant with him And one of the awesomest things about those who are in covenant with God and nothing else, just, just God with everything, he, he blesses you abundantly. He gives you land. 
He gives you land. He gives you pros- property. He prospers you. And we're going to go back to Abraham on this. Okay, Abraham. And uh, But first, we're going to talk a little bit about, I'm going to say good morning to everybody. Um, we're going to talk about looking at the covenants you're in and making sure that you never got into any ungodly covenants unknowingly. All right, because any any covenants that you're still stuck in, um, knowingly and even unknowingly, can come against the blessing of the Lord in your life, can come against you moving forward in your life, ministry, and business, can keep you from your husband or your spouse coming or even your children. And so, you know, in moving forward. So I'm going to teach you all that the Lord showed me on this today. It's going to be very powerful. We're going to have a Q&A about this, and then I'm going to give you a prayer that uh, you can copy and that you can decree. Now, the prayer I will not be able to put... Uh, into the chat uh, because it's too long um, but I will try after after the um, um, this is done I'm going to put it on my website all right and and send out an email or you can go to my faith uh Faith Lane Power Up Group on Facebook. It's free. I post a lot of uh, prayers and decrees in there. They're already written for you. Um, And uh, please, I want to encourage you to uh, get the prayers, the decrees, and uh, join our Faith Lane Power Up Group on Facebook. All right, let me put that link in there. Um, And also, make sure you are... uh, subscribe to my email by going to adamarystrawhand.com all right and then you can get these prayers these decrees that are already written for you i send them out um and you know they're just really helpful to make sure that what you're speaking is 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 bible based and this is what the holy spirit has given me and freely i receive freely i give to you we got to make sure that we are uh we renounce any unholy and ungodly covenants And that we are only in one holy covenant with God. Um, Because I'll tell you what, we we know that the accuser is in the courts of heaven night and day, day and night, accusing us before the Lord uh, uh, of things, of our sin, and of any covenants that we're in that are not of God. And the accuser, that evil one, he knows how important covenants are to God. Because God was in covenant with Abraham and he, God held his promises for all of Abraham's descendants, which include us. And why, and why are we in covenant with Abraham as Christians? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, the new covenant, it brought it all together. Right? The, the, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was a covenant exchange for all of us back to God. But we have to receive it. We have to claim it. We have to proclaim it. All right. And then we have to make sure that we get out of any ungodly, unholy covenants or even any covenants through business, ministry, or anything that we were in. Anything we signed verbally or physically is considered a covenant on earth as it is in heaven. So I'm going to teach you guys uh, something very powerful today that is going to give you breakthrough. All right. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you all got suited up this morning. You got on your armor of God. You took your seat of authority in Christ Jesus. Okay. And you got everybody covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. I call Wednesday's camel day because the son of Abraham, Isaac, the Lord provided for him through camels camels represent provision blessing wealth prosperity so if you're seeing camels behold isaac lifted up his eyes to the horizon and behold his camels were coming your camels are coming the lord god provided for his own son jesus christ by bringing the camels from afar loaded down and it, those those it, those three kings we're not, they didn't just bring one little teeny tiny box of gold, frankincense, and myrrh like you see in the Christmas decorations. No. They thought a king was being born. They had caravans and caravans and caravans of camels, of silks, carpets, gold, rugs. They would have prostrated down on the ground before him. 
Jesus was probably almost a year old by the time the three kings got to him. Go back and read it. Read it again. And I highly recommend the Bible teaching of Greek scholar, Bible scholar, uh, Rick Renner. Pastor Rick Renner. Pastor Rick Renner goes into the Greek text. He goes into the Hebrew text. They study what these kings would have brought And why did Jesus need that provision? Mary and Joseph and Jesus need all that provision because they had to flee to Egypt for seven years and Joseph couldn't work. They had to go into hiding. You talk about being in a quarantine We're we've just been in a quarantine for a little over a month. Can you imagine Mary and Joseph and Jesus being in a quarantine in Egypt having to hide for almost, I guess it was, they said it was almost seven years until Herod died because Herod gave an order that all children under the age of two years old were, were to be killed. So God sent an angel to warn Joseph to flee to Egypt. But before that, what happened? He provided for them. He sent the camels. He brought them the finances to do what they needed to do to be taken care of. If he does it for Jesus, he'll do it for you because we are all his sons and daughters now through Christ Jesus. Behold, your camels are coming. I, 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 I gave uh, Picarillo, David Picarillo, a happy birthday. His, my moderator here, Picarillo, his birthday was Friday and we didn't broadcast Friday because I had lost my voice on Friday from being up all night praying in the fourth watch. And... So I canceled the broadcast on Friday, but it was David Picarillo's birthday on Friday. And so I wished him a happy birthday uh, Monday. And I put a post on here with a camel with a party hat on. (laughs) Because David likes to talk about camels. Picarillo likes to talk about camel. (laughs) So if you didn't see that post here on YouTube, uh, those of you who are subscribed, make sure you're subscribed that you also get my community posts here. So happy belated birthday. And let me tell you something. Jesus had a belated birthday present. Yeah, it was, he was almost a year old when he got his camels. Come on. Woohoo! Seek the deeper things. Jesus said the people perish for lack of knowledge. Go deeper, go deeper. What's that scripture? It's the glory of kings to search out a matter. We are kings and priests. Search out the matter. Go deeper with scripture. Let's talk about covenant today, my friends. Well, hello, Diana Velaz. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sending much love to you. Good morning, Jeff P. God bless you. Good morning, Lisette Odorno. Thank you. Thank you for my anniversary wishes. I will make sure Michael, my husband, sees this. Since CQA mom says, awesome, we celebrated 20 years on 10 one 2, 19. So you're a, you're, you're a, what's a 20 years, uh, not a centurion. What's the 20 years? Give, give me the, you know, and what's the gift for the 20th anniversary? Is it silver and gold? Is it silk? What should my camels, what should Mike and my camels bring for our 20th anniversary? What should they be loaded down with? Uh, Cincy QA mom says struggling greatly with covenant. Okay. This is, it's a good thing you're here today. Holy spirit. Thank you for bringing Cincy today because we're going to talk about covenant and we're going to strip any ungodly, unholy covenants off today. And we're going to rededicate ourselves to God with one holy covenant. But you guys might have some hidden covenants that you may not think that you may not know. What? I didn't even think that would matter. Well, we're going to talk about that today. So good to see you all today. Nadia. Hello, Nadia. Nadia Alvarez. Hello, Elizabeth Rodriguez. Woohoo! That's right, Picarillo. Camels are coming. Picarillo says he has a new wallpaper for his phone, and it's his birthday camel. <laughs> Didn't you love that birthday camel, Picarillo? 
I found that. And I was like, I got to put that birthday camel up for David Pickerel. He's got a little tooty horn, toot, toot, and a party hat. <laughs> it's, he's, got a, he's got a birthday cake next to him. He's hanging out on the beach. He's a cool birthday camel. Oh, Pickerel says platinum for the 20th year. Ooh, platinum. I like platinum. Platinum's good. It's strong. Shh. Mike and I, we, we do have a very strong marriage. You know, sometimes I drive him nuts. <laughs> but really, the Lord has blessed us. And the reason it's so strong is because of the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that, too. And Mike and I will do some videos so you can hang out. Me, You can hang out with Big Mike with me. We have our little picnic later. We'll take a video. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my peeps. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I want to take your questions today. We're going to talk about covenant, and I'm going to throw a question at you. All right? This is, you know, this is going to really stir you up. All right? It's going to make you think, okay? The, the spirit of religion wants us to be in covenant with them with religion the government wants us to be in covenant with them with government right we got to sign government papers you know we got to sign the bapt if you're a catholic you sign the baptismal certificate um you know covenant with institutions all right covenant with institutions and that's the thing i'm going to talk about covenant with institutions instead of god and that's what we're going to talk about right now i want i want you guys to start thinking about written we're going to talk about the written and then we're going to talk about the spoken a written covenant is anything that you did in your lifetime and even the lifetime of your ancestors where they swore allegiance, loyalty. Okay, so, you know, allegiance, loyalty, or, or um, you know, contractually was something for exclusivity. In other words, so, um, you know, the little baby gets baptized in the Catholic Church, and a Catholic Church certificate is 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 written for that baby as a baptism certificate, right? So it's like you got to have all these what they the Catholic Church calls sacraments through the Catholic Church. I'm not bashing the Catholic Church. I'm just teaching you about covenants and how God looks at them, right? And our you know, they they look at they say, "Okay, you have to be in covenant with the Catholic Church. You have to have all these sacraments and you have to to prove that you have these sacraments in order for your uh marriage, you know, to get married in the Catholic church, uh, uh, approved. Right. So it's like, it's like a covenant approval process that you go through by man's approval. Listen to me by man's approval and not, not God's. Okay. Hear me out. All right. <clears throat> that's, that's religious covenants. Then there's these secret society covenants that are out there. The Masons, um, the Shriners, um, there's all kinds of societal, they call them secret societies where you or your ancestors or someone in your bloodline or even yourself, you want to become a part of this special secret society and you, you write your name on a, on a, an agreement and you speak a vow. So two things that's written and a spoken vow. So God looks at your signature. He looks at the spoken vow as a covenant of what you are in. Well, on earth as it is in heaven, whatever is written on earth is written in heaven in your scroll. Hear me out here. I'm not trying to confuse you. I want to take you step by step. I just want to get those juices going in your brain. And I want you to start thinking. And I want the Holy Spirit to begin making you think about any covenants you may have been in that you never renounced. Okay. Okay. Because if these covenants are not renounced and covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, they're still activated in heaven. And the accuser can use them against you to keep you from the blessings of God. What? Yes. How do I know this? 
I went through it. I would not give you anything that I did not already go through myself, that the Holy Spirit did not already show me already. And I saw the fruit from it. I saw the breakthrough from it almost immediately after I renounced all those unholy covenants, after I renounced them. And my husband saw a breakthrough. He didn't want to say the covenant renouncing prayer. And I printed it out off the printer form. And he was like, this is really, what, what do I have to do this for, you know? And I said, honey, I said, the Holy Spirit told me that there was some, you know, ungodly covenants in your bloodline. And I said, you know, you may not even know who was in the Masons. You may not even know who was in, in these, right, who made covenants and made agreements and things like that over the years in your bloodline that are still attached to you today and coming against your household. He's like, I didn't even think about that. And so he spoke it. And let me tell you something. We have been trying to start this business for a couple of years. We got this idea two, three years ago, and it never launched. It never took off. And I know now it's because both me and my husband, we renounced unholy, ungodly covenants. So two things you want to think about spoken vows and written vows where allegiance was pledged, right? Secret societies, uh, the Masons, things like that. Um, uh, any covenants with any religious institution. Covenants with government, swearing your allegiance to government. We're going to talk about that and how you can have the grace of God, even though, you know, things you might have to do by law, all right, but you can put the grace of God on it. We're going to talk about that. And covenants with ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-spouses, covenants with old workplaces. What? Yes. Yes. Let me tell you what happened to me. I had a very successful business for about five to seven years here uh, called Marketing at Full Speed. The Lord gave me the business. He gave me the idea for it back in 2012 to become a coach for up-and-coming race car drivers and up-and-coming NASCAR drivers. The Lord also gave me an idea for a system called the sponsor attraction system. Well, I got the sponsor attraction system and I kind of did what, what we call a, a poor man's copyright on it. You know, I put, I, I wrote the system out, how it worked and, you know, kind of mailed it to myself and put it in a, um, um, registered mail, you know, did the poor man's copyright on it. And then I LLC the company and then I had everything, in my company, under the LLC, the system and everything uh, with creative license, you know, it belonged to me, everything like that. So anybody that came to work for me, uh, whether it be an intern, a college intern, <clears throat> or, you know, an assistant or whatever, anybody that came to work for me had to sign a agreement, uh, a confidentiality agreement, right? And, you know, called an NDE, a non-disclosure, you know, NDE. Uh, non-disclosure agreement and a non-compete okay because I was the only one doing this in motorsports and it was working and race car drivers were getting sponsors like never before it it, it was completely revolutionary it was it was tough because I was a woman trying to do this in a man's sport but the Lord was behind me and so I started coaching this racing mom her name was Christy and her son, Anthony, was a very talented race car driver. And she had been going to school for marketing. And she reached out to me because she wanted to see her son succeed with his career. But she was a single mom and she needed major sponsorship because it takes millions of dollars to get to, get to the NASCAR level. And she said, Anna Marie, um, I want to work with you. I want to learn everything you know so that I can work with you and apply this to my son and, you know, I want to build a trusting relationship with you. And she's a good Christian woman. I said, Christy, I'll tell you what. I said, I want to go through my program, learn everything you can as a client first, and then we'll see how you do. If you get some success, then I will bring you in for about, you know, a few months as an intern. And then if you do really well, then I'll hire you as a full-time assistant. 
And so we did all that. Very, very successful. It went extremely well. We got to the point where she was an intern and then became a full-time assistant to my business. I had her sign all kinds of non-disclosure agreements, all kinds of legal agreements, um, non-compete, all this stuff. And the agreement was for three years, okay? So we did our three years and the, the three years, you know, finished. And at the end of those three years, the Lord started calling me to ministry. And he said, Anna Marie, I want you to give everything away. Give your clients away. Give your business to Christy. He told me that. Give it to her. Give her the sponsor attraction system. Just give it to her. My husband was furious. He was like, you need to sell that. It's worth it. Oh, God's money. You need to sell that. I'm like, the Lord told me to give it away. I'm going to be obedient. My, he, he, Mike didn't understand. And he told me to just, you know, well, I was obedient to the Lord. And I didn't sign anything, anything. I just said, Christy, here you go. It's all yours. I trust you. Here's the files. You know, our non-disclosure agreement is run out. Uh, yada, yada. Just go for it. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I prayed over her. I, you know, literally just gave it to her. Well, I'm starting my ministry. I'm getting going. And then Christy, you know, gets going. She's got the website. I'm sending her clients. I'm giving her my blessing. I even did a video for her. Nothing, 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 nothing. She's struggling for months. I'm like, what is going on? She's like, I don't know. She goes, I can't. It, this just won't take off. She goes, it should because, you know, you, you just, and you, you just gave it to me. We know it works. You've given me your blessing. You've told the clients to come to me. She says, but it's just not taking off. No matter what I do, and I'm doing everything you're telling me. So another couple of months go by. And so I'm like, well, you know, it's time for me to close out marketing at full speed, the LLC, go through all my old files, delete all them, get, you know, I'm cleaning out all my old files. And I see this folder, this folder comes up and it says Christy and it has all her agreements in it. And I open it up and the Lord says to me, you never cancel the agreement in the spirit. I just heard the Holy Spirit say that to me. You never cancel the covenant with Christy in the spirit. Listen to me. So she is still under that confidentiality and that non-disclosure agreement. And she cannot prosper until her signature and your signature is wiped from the record books of heaven and canceled and nullified under the blood of Jesus Christ. I was like, what? I, I couldn't believe what the Holy Spirit was telling me. I said, but Lord, I was obedient. I gave everything to her. You told me to. I don't understand why she's not prospering. I've given her my blessing. I gave it to her verbally. He said, yes, but you never released her in the, in the, in the, in the spirit on earth as it is in heaven. So there are covenants that are made of people you've worked for. Maybe you left a company and you had a non-disclosure agreement and it ran out. A non-compete and it ran out. But if you don't go, go and cut that off in the spirit and get the blood of Jesus Christ on it, renounce it, it's, it's still going to be held against you and that's why the business that you have now is not may not be prospering. Maybe you've been divorced for a long time and you're waiting for that next husband. But because the covenant was not severed in the spirit through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're still in covenant with your old spouse. <laughs> and you're, you're the new spouse that the Lord has for you can't come forth. I'm telling you, this is not woo-woo stuff. This is what the Lord showed me. Now, let me tell you what happened. I took the papers that had Christy and my signature on it with all that stuff, and I lifted it up to the Lord right at that very minute because I care very much about this person, and I wanted to see her prosper, and I wanted to be able to move forward with my ministry. And so I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that the record books in heaven be open. And that every covenant that I have written and verbal 
be severed in the natural and be severed in the heavens, be severed in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Jesus, to put your blood upon me and upon Christy. Wipe our agreement out in the record books of heaven. And I renounce all covenants that I have with Christy. And I, you know, I won't say her last name. In the name of Jesus, and I loose her and release her in the natural and the spiritual. She is no longer bound by this agreement. In Jesus' name. And neither am I in Jesus' name. I, it had to be renounced, severed, covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, and the record books of heaven had to be reconciled. And that's what I did. So renounced, right? Severed, covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, and reconciled in the record books of heaven. I'm telling you a week later, I'm not kidding. Her business started taking off like crazy. She's like, I don't know what happened. See, I couldn't really tell Christy about this because she she's a believer in Christ and she's a Christian. She goes to church. But I think this would have been a little bit too woo-woo, you know, like, whoa, too much for her. Okay. And she said, what happened? She goes, I don't know what happened. She goes, it's just like, all of a sudden. <laughs> and now her business is thriving. She has clients all brand new. I mean, everything is taking off for her. She's been getting um, speaking engagements. It's 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 like woo! She is free, baby. And then I was set free, and soon right after that, I fully started coming into this ministry and getting on this microphone, and everything started taking off, and my new students started flowing in. Right. This is why Jesus will say. Right, get rid of everything in your past, sell everything and pick up your cross and follow me. Why? Because you're coming into a shift of covenants. You're severing off the old and you're coming into the new covenant of Jesus Christ, which is the cross. And he will give you even a hundred times more than what you had before when you come into covenant with God. He told God told the same thing to Abraham. Leave the house of your fathers and go into a land that I have for you. Abraham had to go on blind faith. And only be in covenant with God. And God said, Abraham is a friend of mine. Listen, I want you to start thinking about this in your mind and go, wait a minute. Did I have a non-disclosure agreement with a company back in blah, blah, blah? And this is why my business isn't prospering? Did I ever sever, uh, you know, any agreements that I had? Were you ever engaged to anyone? Maybe you didn't marry that person, but maybe you were engaged to that person. That's a covenant on earth as it is in heaven. That, co that engagement needs to be broke off in heaven. In the spirit. It needs to be renounced. Right? Severed off. Covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and reconciled in the books of heaven. Look at, I wouldn't tell you guys this if, if I didn't believe that, that we were in a time where God wants us free of all this crap. He wants us free of these covenants. He wants us loosed from them. He wants us knowledge. We're his people so that we can move freely for the kingdom where he wants us to send, where he wants to send us, what he wants us to build, who he wants us to work with. He wants us free of all entanglements. He wants us free of, of, of all of these covenants of our past. He wants us free so that we can move freely in the spirit with nothing that we are still tethered to, to, to go and do exactly what he's called us to do free and clear. I'm going to give you that prayer just a little bit. Look at, I, I'm, not, I'm just telling you what happened to me. I look at the fruit. Jesus says, look at the fruit. <laughs> look at the fruit. And when I see, when, when I do something the Holy Spirit tells me to do, and then I do it, and I see fruit right after, I'm like, okay. That's pretty cut and dry, God. 
you know, it was very, very important that when Jesus was crucified, okay, when he was coming under trial, he was very careful not to come into agreement with the words of Herod and Pilate. Go back. Because covenants are agreements. It's what you verbally come into agreement with. Pilate asked him, are you king of the Jews? What did Jesus say? It's you who say I am. What? Yes. Am I? <laughs> Jesus only came into agreement with what God said. Why did he do that? Because he was in one covenant with God. That's it. Well, Jesus paid his taxes. He told Peter to go pay his taxes. Wasn't he in covenant with the government? Wasn't he in covenant with the government? No, Peter was. He sent Peter to go get the payment and to go send it and to, to give it. He said, what is God's is God's and what is. And he had Peter pay it for him. Just, I want you guys to look back on this stuff and go, wait a minute. Jesus was very careful about his agreements. He didn't even have a rent agreement. He stayed at people's homes. He was totally dependent on his covenant with God. What? Yes. Now his parents went and presented him at the temple when he was a little baby. According to Jewish, Jesus was a Jew. He went by what God said that they should do. They were obedient to what God said they should do. That he was presented to the temple, not to the temple, but he was presented to God. See, we got to go back and read our Bible. And we got to look at how religion and how the demonic has twisted things, right? To say, well, if you're in covenant with the church and you're in covenant with religion, you're good with God. No. You're all, you should only be in covenant with God and what God wants. And if God says, okay. Do you write by this? Do you write by this? Do you write by this? If God gives you permission to go into an agreement with someone, if God gives you permission to go and do this, always every agreement that you come into, from marriage to any business, anything. When I, when I got my LLC, right? When I got my LLC for my business, for Faith Lane Media, I anointed the papers, I dedicated them to God and I said, this business is in covenant with you and not the government. Therefore, everything that I have to pay, my taxes or whatever, goes through you, God. It all belongs to you. I took my LLC papers and I dedicated them to God. And I said, you, Holy Spirit, are the chief operating officer of this business. And I will be faithful with my business that everything that comes in, I tithe, I give my offerings. Who else did that? Abraham. He gave his tithes and offerings. He gave them to Melchizedek, who was a king and a priest of the, the town of Salem, originally the original Jerusalem. And when he brought his tithes and offerings, because God prospered him, Abraham left everything did what the Lord said. He left all those old covenants. He went only into covenant with God. He went to the land God had with him. Okay. He, he, he dedicated it all to God, his land, his, his, his crops, his animals, his family, everything. And it says, then God prospered Abraham. Why did God do that? God wanted to make sure Abraham didn't have any strings, entanglements, or any other, you know, responsibilities to anything else and only to God. 
and to what God was trying to build for his people for the future. But Abraham had to be obedient to God and bring his tithes and offerings, right? He gave God 10% of everything he made. That's that covenant. Everything we make in this business, everything we make from these t-shirts, 10% will go to God. Because I say, Lord, this business is in covenant with you and nobody else. Listen, my friends, I want, I want you to start thinking about this right now. Who and what do you, could you still be in covenant with? I'm telling you, one of the worst ones are those secret societies like the Masons and all that. Because they want their covenant to be put above God and all that. They want your loyalty to just be to them. Not good. That's demonic. Liberty and freedom, Judy says. Judy says, I did this nine years ago. Thank God for his wisdom. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Yes. Susan Q, wow, this morning I broke covenants with a Catholic church that my mom made for me and that I made for my mom. I baptized Daisy to please my mom. Now I break all of it in Jesus' name. That's right. The baptism is when Daisy comes of age and with her mind will, you know, with her will, with her spirit, she wants to go and get baptized. And she makes that choice. And the Holy Spirit can do a work in her. Right? And you're probably saying, well, why do the Jews circumcise their children? Why do they do all that stuff? Why do they do all that stuff? Da, 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 da. Because God said. Because God said. Because God said. That, right? We don't go by religious law. We go by what God said. And if God said, God didn't say in the Bible anywhere, baptize your children when they're babies. Uh, that that I know. Now we baptized our daughter because, you know, I was still a practicing Catholic back then. But we're well, not practicing, but, you know, I, I kind of did it for the family too. And I've since renounced that off of Landry and reinstated the baptism that she had in the church that she made as a choice. She made up as a personal choice. You see, this is not about ritual. It's about prophetic acts of faith that we do as individuals in obedience to God. Who's in covenant with God? Who has just, just broken every covenant that they've ever been in in the name of Jesus and say, God, I only want to be in covenant with you because he is the source of everything. Everything else is a resource. You know, you got to sever those verbal agreements. You got to sever those written agreements. My husband had a bad business deal that he, he was in partners with a guy for a while in his plumbing business because that guy owned a business or a plumbing license and Mike was having a hard time passing his plumbing test because my husband has dyslexia and all the plumbing tests were written and he, he kept trying to go. And he, my husband is an amazing plumber. He should have been a master plumber and, and, you know, but every time he would go to try to take the test, he would struggle through it because of his dyslexia. So, um, he had to hire a guy, a, a foreman that held a North Carolina plumbing license. And, uh, my husband would go and pick this guy up from work every day. Cause this guy didn't have a truck. And I mean, my husband did everything for this guy and the business started to build up. And they had a verbal agreement because this guy held the plumbing license, okay? And then Mike, Mike did all the money. He, he, he got the jobs and everything like that. So they were in business together for a couple of years. And one of the other employees came to Mike, who was really loyal to Mike, and said, listen, that guy 
who, you know, you are, who holds a plumbing license, he's going behind your back. <laughs> and Mike was like, no, you know, he wouldn't do that. You know, and I, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked out for him. I mean, Mike and I even gave him money so that he could adopt his uh, grandson. I mean, we, we did so much for this guy because we appreciated you know, him allowing us to use his plumbing license to build the company. And he was paid very well. And uh, eventually when the guy did get his, his driver's license back, Mike bought him a truck. I mean, my husband's very generous. So bills just starts growing. My husband's getting, going out, getting all these builders. I was helping him because of my marketing background. We got all these builders. It's going really, really good. The business is thriving. And this other guy who was just kind of a little helper guy who really liked Mike, he just kept saying, look, he, this guy's not being loyal to you. You got to, you know, he's taking, I'm telling you what, he goes, I'm watching his truck. He's taking material home. And when he comes back to work the next day, there's less material on that, that truck. Mike's like, no, you know, Mike, Mike didn't want to see that. And he didn't want to think that he, he could be betrayed. My husband's very trusting. He's got a good heart. You know, he appreciated, well, come to find out that guy was doing that he was doing that he was going behind mike's back finally a builder came to mike and said listen uh your guy here is is came to me and wanted to bid the job on his own without you mike was like what see whatever is hidden will be exposed whatever's in the darkness will eventually be exposed and god will show you that you're in a bad covenant and we're going to talk about that how to ask the lord to reveal to you who you might have agreements with around you that you think are good, but are not. <laughs> okay. So Mike was devastated. I'm telling you, he loved that guy. He loved him and it, it hurt him bad. And he had to tell him, look, I I'm sorry, you know, turn your truck in. If you took any material, I'm going to take any material. And of course, as soon as Mike asked him and the guy got all defensive, that was a pretty good sign, <laughs> you know, and so after that, my husband had to declare bankruptcy because some of the jobs that they were on, they, and they couldn't have a license to keep going because that guy held the license. And there was just all kinds of problems that happened that after that, we had to close the business, declare bankruptcy. That's terrible. My husband had to max out his credit cards to pay his employees because he always puts his employees first. That's how kind of man he is. He made sure that guy was paid. And then he, Mike was just like, fine, if he took material from him, let him keep it. It's not worth it. I was like, okay. But it hurt Mike bad. My husband worked really hard to build that business, Performance Plumbing. And, um, you know, he struggled trusting people after that. He really did. He really did. And so I said, you know what? We got to forgive him. That's the biggest thing. We got to forgive those who have hurt us. And we got to sever any ties we have with them and come out of agreement with them and all that. So I, I brought my husband through that of severing, you know, any, any agreements he had with them, verbal or contractual. You know, we severed all that. We loosed it and released it. And I said, honey, is there any bitterness in your heart for that person? Is there any bitterness? He's like, yeah, I'm still ticked off at him. I said, well, yeah. I said, okay. I said, you got to loose and release that. Okay. And he's like, oh, no. and he, he didn't want to. And I said, just, just follow. So I just led Mike through and I said, Lord, you know, we're, we repent for any bitterness that we're holding towards that person. We ask for grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We forgive them. We release them. We loose them to you in Jesus name. We sever all agreements and any covenants we ever had with them. In the name of Jesus, we renounce them. We ask you, Jesus, to put your blood on them and then wipe them out from the record books of heaven with your blood. Just completely reconcile the books that Mike and I and our household and our finances and our businesses are all completely severed off of any agreements, any covenants that we ever had with this person in Jesus name. Now, I've, like I said, I've got a written prayer I'm going to give you and you can go into the into the group uh, on Facebook and you'll have that. So I want you to think about those things, too. Is there any bitterness or unforgiveness you're holding towards that person? Right? Right? Loose and release it on the cross. Jesus took our bitterness. He took it with the sour wine, the vinegar. That's a sign that Jesus even took our bitterness. Yes. 
Holy Spirit, tell me that one time. So let's talk about these things. I want you to get the juices rolling. I'm going to ask you some questions here. Do you think you could still be stuck in a covenant with someone in the spirit that you never severed off or broke off? Someone you were in business with, someone you worked for, someone you were engaged to. Covenants you made with a church, covenants you made with a secret society. I say, Lord, I'm only in one holy covenant with you and the covenant of my marriage to Michael. And that's it. And then Mike and I, we rededicated our daughter to God. But she isn't only in one covenant with God. Katie Hawk, her father-in-law and his father were part of the Masons. She found a Mason's fez. I think that's a little hat that they wear. And certificate with his name on it, disposed of it, and asked God for cleansing of your home and of that spirit. Yes, sever that covenant off you and your husband. You're going to want to, Katie Hawk, you're going to want to do that covenant breaking prayer that I'm going to be sharing with you soon. I'm going to read it, but I really want you guys to um, put your, Susan Q says she's being reminded of so many people and places. Things she made agreements with that she's breaking now. Thank you. So many of you are going to have breakthrough. I mean, you're going to be like, what? You're going to see like, bam, you start breaking these covenants off and getting them covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and asking them to be white from the record books of heaven. You're going to be, there's going to be blessings released to you. Like wildfire. I'm telling you, Mike and I experienced this. I experienced this. I saw other people experience that I severed covenants off like Christy. And her business starts taking off a week later. What? Yes. Let's take your questions, my peeps. Now, it's 12-12 on the East Coast right now. 12-12 p.m. on the east coast of the united states 12 is god's perfect government i had a word several weeks ago that god's perfect government god's perfect covenant of the apostolic government of the 12 apostles is coming together with the 12 tribes of israel government the two governments are coming together to form god's government across the nations And when a government is founded by God and dedicated to God, you are in covenant with God. That is why our government is trying to get back to dedicating things to God like our forefathers did. They got this. Our forefathers, uh, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, they understood this. They had a Holy Spirit knowing of covenant. They don't want to be in covenant with the king anymore. They wanted to be in covenant with the king of kings. That's why our constitution, our declaration of independence, are all, they all start out as as dedicated to God. In the name of our Lord, in the name of our Lord, in the name of our Lord. These people sign their name in the name of our Lord. It went through the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. What? Yes. And why do you think the enemy, the devil, is trying to twist it all back? Why, is he, why do you think he's trying to get rid of our Constitution? Because it's a cover, our Constitution is a covenant with God. Are you guys seeing this? Are you getting it? Is it clicking? I want people to just think about this. Who does it answer to? Does it answer to God or does it answer to the Vatican? Does it answer to God or does it answer to the grand pooba of of your secret society? Does it whatever you call them? I don't know why you call them grand pooba. <laughs> Is that of the Flintstones? Fred Flintstone and Barney Barney Rubble, they were they were in the Grand Poobah organization, <laughs> the Water Buffalo, right? They were swearing their allegiance. To them. 
you can become a member of something like, you know, Mike and I became a member of every church. We had membership, but are we in covenant with them? No. We get some of the blessings and the perks of membership. We get a covering of that membership. Like a like if you become a, a, a partner of this ministry, okay, you get you get the prophetic covering of the ministry. Why? Because it's dedicated to God. Was the land dedicated? Was there a dedication ceremony at your church that dedicated the land, the building, the church, the congregation to God? My church did that. Every time they build something new, they dedicate it to God for God's plans and purposes. They get this. They understand this. Now, the Lord is calling up new covenant type ministries now that are just in covenant with him. And not on the 501c3. So some of you that give to my ministry and you go, wait a minute. She's not a 501c3. I can't write this off on my taxes. Let me tell you why. Because the Lord gave me a vision one night and told me not to be a 501c3. So if you go to my website, annamariestrohan.com, you click on ministry and you want to give an offering to this ministry. You'll see what the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me about not becoming a 501c3 through the ministry. Because he said he wanted me just in covenant with him through the ministry. Now my business, my media business that publishes books, writes books, puts out content. That's an LLC. That's a business. And you can understand that by what the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me. He said, Anna Marie, I will bless both sides of the riverbanks. The Holy Spirit will flow the river. He gave me a word in Ezekiel. And he said, I will bless both sides of your riverbanks. One for fruit and provision, which is business. And one for healing and ministry, which is what we do here. Whatever I give away free. Whatever I give of myself is my ministry. Whatever product I put out there is my business. Okay. And the Lord gave me clarity on that. And he's calling up a lot of ministries this way. But he doesn't want the ministries to be, uh, to be 501c3s anymore and have to answer to what they're telling you you can say and what you're telling you you can do and to only be in covenant with him. Now, thank God President Trump took away a lot of those restrictions on the 501c3 so that the church can, can start to, to speak freely. You know, and some churches that are already 501c3s, I know that God's grace is on them. I'm not saying, but he's calling up a lot of new ministries, a lot of new churches to not be 501c3s. Okay? And you can understand what the Lord's thoughts of that. It all has to do with covenant. Who are you in covenant with? Who have you dedicated everything to? Right? Is, is your ministry being faithful to the Lord? Is your business being faithful to the Lord? Are you a Melchizedek, Abrahamic ministry and business? In covenant with God, as God is prospering you, are you giving your 10% to the Lord? Wow. John P says, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it could, but it may be. I want to sever, which I have done knowingly and unknowingly. All right. You know, if you are in my power up group, you can go and that prayer will be available. And I'm also going to put it in the message area here on YouTube and also under this broadcast. And I also have it on my website. I will give you this prayer to do. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so you can get the updates and that you are subscribed to my 
uh, email through my website, annemarystrawhand.com. You can get the updates or you join my power up group for free on Facebook where this prayer will be posted to sever every ungodly, unholy covenant and proclaim that you are only in one covenant with God. Jeff, if your church is a 501c3 and they they do everything, you know, right by the Lord, it's okay. Don't panic, okay? God's grace is on the the churches that are, you know, doing right by him, okay? A lot of churches are already 501c3s. They 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 did this way before, you know, God began began to speak and say, you know, any new ministries coming up uh, you know, don't be a 501c3. If if the Lord speaks to the pastor directly and says, you know, renounce the 501c3, then he should be obedient and renounce it. I, I'm not ridiculing or condemning anyone that is a 501c3 if that's, uh, you know, what they did to begin with, okay? They can ask for the Lord's grace upon that, you see. But that was a twisting of the enemy to get the churches... Uh, that, that was, um, I don't want to get po- too political, but Lyndon Johnson did it. And, um, I, I believe Lyndon Johnson was working with an evil agenda and a socialist agenda. And he was trying to shut down the church's voice. He was trying to shut down the voice of the pastors so he could control them, uh, in what they said. And as you noticed more and more control, that the churches that signed up for the 501c3 more and more and more control was coming on them what they could say what they could do even to a point where uh, before trump was in office they were tell a lot of uh, states were telling the pastors they had to submit their sermons before they gave them to the people well what happened to freedom of speech what happened to freedom of religion freedom of freedom of religion is not for uh to make the government or to make churches do what you want, okay? Freedom of religion is not to make the churches do what you want. Freedom of religion is to to keep the government out of religion, to keep the government out of the churches. But Lyndon Johnson came in with his socialist controlling agenda and started up this 501c3, started up all these, these things to control the church, to control what the men of God, the men and women of God were saying. But President Trump has come in and he's lifted a lot of that stuff. So now the church can speak freely again. So the churches that are already 501c3s, I I just pray that the Lord gives them grace and that the Lord speaks to the pastors about, um, you know, that everything is dedicated to God and that, you know, they're not in covenant. You know, they come out of covenant with. But if you're giving your money to the church and that's where God tells you to do and you you are in covenant with God and you're okay I've given I've given to 501c3 ministries because the Lord told me to because he will tell me they are in covenant with me now there are some 501c3 ministries that are more in covenant with the government than they are with God. And you've got to ask the Lord for discernment on that. You've got to ask him for discernment on those. Okay. All right. Just use, use discernment. But I will tell you this, that things are shifting and things are changing. And I believe you're going to see a lot of churches come out of the 501c3. You are going to start seeing that. All right, and so just repent if if you ever gave your finances to a church that was not in covenant with God. Just repent for that. Are they doing God's work? There's a major transference of wealth happening right now. I saw a, sto- a story today, yesterday. Okay, so if the Lord is telling you not to pair with anything that's 501c3 whatsoever, then, you know, you don't do that. You you go by what God tells you. You go to the Holy Spirit yourself. This ministry is not a 501c3. Okay? 
And I sought the Lord on that. I didn't do it just because some prophet said. I do listen to the prophets if the Lord says to me, listen to that prophet. I do that in obedience. But I say, wait a minute, Lord. What are you telling me? I want this confirmed with me, Lord. What do you want me to do? Because some prophets really are hearing from the Lord. I believe Mark Taylor is hearing from the Lord. And Mark Taylor brought up that 501c3. And he said, a lot of the churches, not all of them, are in a, in a Babylon-type situation with the 501c3. And he even said, you'll know the ones that are bad and you know the ones that are good because God's going to expose the ones that are not in true covenant with him. So use discernment, okay? I went to the Lord myself and I struggled with it for months, for months. I was about to do the 501c3 paperwork. I was about to do it. I lifted it up to the Lord and I said, what do you want to do, God? What do you want me to do? I want to be in obedience, God. And so one night, I was really struggling with it. I was throwing myself on my face before the Lord, and I said, what do you want me to do, God? Because I saw that Trump had lifted a lot of it, and, you know, okay, maybe it was okay now. And, but I said, God, what do you want this ministry to be? It belongs to you. And one night, he woke me up out of a sleep, and he said, look up Hebrew weddings on YouTube. I'm like, Hebrew weddings on YouTube? And so I went and started watching Hebrew weddings. And as I was watching the Hebrew wedding, I saw the groom standing under that chuppa, right? The covering, right? And singing to his bride. And it just happened, the first Hebrew wedding that I started watching, this Hebrew bride was just, she wasn't even in sight of the groom yet. She was standing way, way, way far away from the room. He was singing to her, wooing her to come, and she wasn't coming. The bride wasn't coming. The bride wasn't coming. And the Lord says, this is how I feel right now. And then he showed me my husband Mike's ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, why are you showing Mike, Mike's ex-girlfriend? I go, Lord, why are you showing me Mike's ex-girlfriend? Is my husband Mike still in covenant with his ex-girlfriend? The Lord was like, no, that's how I feel. I feel like my bride is still in covenant with somebody else. And I'm singing to her. I'm wooing to her. I'm wanting to her to come. His church, his church is his bride. And he's singing to her. He's wooing to her. But she's in covenant with somebody else and not him. I was like, oh my gosh. You can read the whole vision that the Lord gave me on my website. Word for word what he said to me. How the non-501c3 ministries will, will really be the ones that will help disciple and bring the bride to Christ, to that wedding day. Because we would, oh, we're only going to be in covenant with God. That's it. Peggy Pierce Field, God told me to give our church, 501c3 church, but they rebel against the government and are usually in danger of using their 501c3. They advocate for Donald Trump and against abortion. Yeah, look at the fruit of your church, right? Are they, you know, because there's going to be good 501c3 churches and there's going to be bad ones. You have to use discernment. God has told me to give to my church, which is a 501c3. God has told me to give to other 501c3 ministries. But they're in covenant with God, you know? So that's what we, we have to make sure. Are they doing the work? Look at their fruit. You know, Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. Susan Q, I love that Mark Taylor does not ask for money. I'm getting turned off by pastors asking for money every broadcast. Here's the thing with pastors asking for money. Mark Taylor also has a business. See, Mark Taylor has a business as well. God is, these are, these are the new kinds of ministries that God is bringing, okay? He's blessing both sides of the river. 
So if you appreciate Mark Taylor and what he's doing, support his business. Buy his book. Buy his products. Support his business. It's about, these are Melchizedek ministries. That's what Jesus was. Jesus of, is of the priestly, kingly order of Melchizedek, which is for the marketplace and the ministry. Melchizedek was a king and a priest. Right? Abraham, devoted to God. His business, devoted to God. Mike. Uh, the, the, you know, my husband, Mike, devoting his family to God, devoting his businesses to God, my ministry, both sides of the river. One is for prayer and healing, right? And teaching of the word. That's what I give out. The other is for producing utilities, products, services. Right, you support me. You support my products. You su- this here is a, is a is a a media source. God told me to start a business called Faith Lane Media. That is a media source, and it's not just going to be for myself. It's going to be for others. It's going to be a publishing company, and it's going to support the ministry. What you give to this ministry blesses you. Is somebody hearing me? If you go somewhere and you hear the word of God and you feel the presence of the Holy Ghost and the Lord touches your heart and says, give to this ministry because it's dedicated to me, that is your choice, your will. It blesses you. So if you give to my ministry, it blesses your household like it blessed Abraham's household, because you're giving in obedience to a Melchizedek ministry. That's for both the marketplace and the ministry. Dedicated to God. So if the Lord touches your heart today and says, you know what? I'm going to sow a seed into this ministry today because I know Anna Marie is going to dedicate it to God and it's going to go to the work of the Lord in this ministry. That's your choice. You got to bring it with your free will. And then I come into agreement with it, receive it, and give it to God. Just the way when Abraham brought his offerings to Melchizedek, Melchizedek received it, brought out bread and wine. They celebrated the offering and they gave it to God. That's what we do here. For you to continue to be blessed and get that Melchizedek covering. It's the way God set it up and he's bringing us back to that. Is this helping someone? Who are you in covenant with? Is the Lord giving you discernment? Because where you give your money, that's the covering connection you have as well. Right? A financial exchange, a handshake is a covenant agreement. Did you ever do any ill-gotten gains with anybody? Did you make a covenant money agreement with somebody? Right? That wasn't good. That went towards doing some kind of evil. We got to repent for that. But here's what I want to tell you, that the transference of wealth is happening. Okay? I read yesterday. Okay? Um, Hang on. Let me pull up this story. I want you guys to know that I've got a good source on this, a good trustworthy source. Hang on. Mm-hmm. The transference of wealth is happening. What's the transference of wealth? Because we're in the great awakening, because the great harvest of souls is about to happen, the church needs a lot of wealth. The church needs a lot of finances to send out uh, 
ministries to send out disciples to rent stadiums to rent buildings to right to go and do the work of the lord to build okay so that great transference of wealth the the bible says that the the wealth of the wicked will be stripped and given to the righteous the wealth of the wicked will be stripped and given to the righteous and i saw something yesterday where President Trump is going to take the money that was being donated to the World Health Organization, the WHO, that's been lying to the people, that's been acting in wickedness, and he's going to give that money to Franklin Graham's Samaritan's Purse because they're the ones that are putting up tents, bringing nurses and volunteers and doctors to help people with this COVID stuff they're going in and helping people that are are being devastated by tornadoes and hurricanes so the transference of wealth is beginning with our very own president where he's taking the money that would have normally be given to another nonprofit 501c3 organization the who that hasn't done one thing to help people who are sick that hasn't done one thing to help anybody except spread lies and wickedness and most of their money comes from wicked intended people and god and, and, and president trump is hearing from god and he's being obedient and he says okay let's look at all these 501c3s who are the good ones and who are the bad ones since we are one nation under god let's let's pray and there were many many people that were praying over our president yesterday and the money that was going to go to the who he is going to give it to another 501c3 that is doing the Lord's work. Samaritan's purse. That, my friends, is a transference of wealth. That, my friends, is a good, holy covenant. The Lord is using the 501c3 right now for his plans and purposes and the transference of wealth. And the 501c3s that are wicked, and there might be some that are in the church, I don't know are being exposed. Watch what God does. And then I say, Lord, transfer into wealth. I want to be in obedience as a ministry. You've called me to build things. I receive, Father, wherever you want to bring it from. I receive it in Jesus' name to build what you called us to build here. Who are you in covenant with? Who are you giving to? Who are they in covenant with? Look at the fruit. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. I'll share that story with you right now. It's from Huckabee. Uh, hang on. Let me get the story. Let me pull it up. The transference of wealth, my friends. Trump yanks millions from the WHO and is giving it to organizations like Reverend Graham Samaritan's Purse. It's happening. The transference of wealth is happening. So we have got to get out of covenants right now. Because we are God's people and we're the righteous and we're going to receive this transference of wealth. But we cannot receive it unless we are, we break off those unholy covenants that we're in. We got to make sure that we are only in covenant with God. Well, this is a very long link. Let me see if I can get a short version of that link. You know, I'm not going to sit here and get all political with you. I'm going to ask you guys to use your discernment because that's up to you. I'm not here to influence you. I'm just here to share with you and for you to go to the Lord with all of this yourself and say, Lord, show me this. I'm here to share what God has given me freely. I receive Freely I give, but you take everything I'm telling you and you take it to God. You all have free will. Lord, give them eyes to see, give them ears to hear. Everything in the dark will be exposed. 
The Bible says that. Some things may hurt you. People that you thought were good were not good. And you can't get angry with them. You can't, right? It's the Lord exposing, and we got to keep our eyes on God and stay in one holy covenant with him. Like I said, if I was at my wedding and I was focused on the septic tank overflowing, I would have allowed that to ruin my wedding. But the main thing is the main thing. The Holy Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit showed up. The mighty rushing wind came in and blew my veil over Mike and I. That's what I focus on. That's what I focus on, remember. The main thing is the main thing is God in the center of it is the, is the covenant with God. Jesus is getting whipped and crucified, right? And, and, and Pilate says to him in front of all those people, Jesus could have been like, yep, I'm king of the Jews. Yep, I am. He could have been right there in front of all those people. He could have compromised right then. He could have compromised with the devil that day and turned those rocks and stones into loaves of bread. But he's in one holy covenant. When you're in one holy covenant with God, there's no compromise. You do what God does. And you receive from God. And sometimes when you receive from God, it comes from unlikely sources. But God can use whoever he wants. God is a source. Everything else is a resource. And when you get out of those unholy covenants, he can bring your blessing from anywhere he wants. Because it, 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 it gets you out of those entanglements. Is this helping somebody today? I'm trying to get a, a, a small link to this. Okay. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, the false prophet, which is the mainstream media can lure us into things that looks good. That's that lying, twisting serpent, just like Eve in the garden, okay? The lying, twisting serpent said, did God really say you couldn't eat from any tree? Did he really say that? And then read the next line. It says, then Eve looked at the tree and it looked good. It looked good. Well, there's a lot of things out there that look good, but they're out of God's will. They're out of covenant with God. Oh, the Masons, they do a lot of charity work. They're good. Well, what are you going to do to be one? You got to, to, you know, do all your initiation crap, sign covenants with them, renounce covenants that you have with God. What? No. My allegiance is to the almighty one and only. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Priyanka Hansinka. Yes, God exposed some people in her life the past few days. She had no option to, but to cut them off from her life. Now, if you don't like confrontation, I have a prayer on my website called God's Acts of Judgment Prayer. Okay. If you don't like confrontation with other people, and if, if God said, get away from that person, they're not good, you know, ooh, uh, then you can, you can pray God's acts of judgment prayer. That's on my website. Go to annamariestrawhand.com and type in God's acts of judgment prayer. And it's a prayer that you can pray that God will just remove people in your life that are not there to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, and he will do it very peacefully, very calmly, where you won't have any confrontation. That person won't get hurt. You won't get hurt. And you can just loose and release that person to God. Forgive them. Release and release all bitterness. And then just, just go before the Lord and sever any soul ties, any covenants, any agreements you have with them. Get the blood of Jesus Christ on it, right? And, you know, this is, this is what it's all about, my friends, you know, it, allowing the Holy Spirit to be your helper so you don't have to have a, 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 an upsetting confrontation with somebody, you know, let him do the heavy lifting, let the Holy Spirit do the heavy lifting. Um, so you can go to my website, annamariestrawhand.com, and uh, you can go and do a search 
for the acts of God's judgment prayer. And you just ask God, God, I don't know who is in an unholy covenant with you. I don't know God who's around me that, you know, but you know, God, your Holy Spirit knows. And so just go to my website, AnnaMarieStrawHand.com. Go to the search, just type in the word acts, A-X, and the acts of God's judgment prayer will come. And I want to freely uh, give you guys these tools and resources because the Lord is speaking to me right now. He's saying, I want my people free of these entanglements. I want them free of these unholy covenants. I want them to be free of anyone in their life that is not there to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that you can move forward in what God's called you to do. So your family can move forward in what God's called you to do. So your husband and wife, your marriage can move forward in what God's called you to do. So your job that he's got for you can move forward so that everything that is written in your scroll in, in heaven, in your destiny can come forth and the accuser cannot hold it back by any legal rights that he has of any unholy covenants that you're in. Was this helping somebody today? There's the link to the acts of God's judgment prayer. And then I'm going to give you this prayer today. We're going to speak it. So just receive it. And then I'm going to uh, put it on my website and put it on my um, YouTube message. So anywhere that you follow me here on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, my uh, email, you will get this new prayer I'm giving you to sever unholy, ungodly covenants. And then give the covenants that you have, marriage, children, um, any covenants that you have to God. And I want to say this to you. This is, this is your word today. He will not direct you to use ungodly means to accomplish godly ends. All right? So he won't say to you, um, Hey, you know what, you know, why don't you go and, uh, you know, work for this, uh, you know, person that, uh, has, you know, prostitution and all that stuff, you know, blah, 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 you know, just so that, you know, you can, uh, you know, work there, you know, and get the money. No, if he sends you to a situation, he may use unlikely people. Okay. He may use unlikely people, right, to bring a blessing into your life so that you can do the work. But that's there's a difference between a transference of wealth and using unlikely people to bless you rather than making you and forcing you to do something unholy for his plans and purposes. God will never force you to do something unholy or ungodly so that he can have his plans and purposes. Okay? Will he have you go into situations to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and do something that might be a little uncomfortable and use people that you normally, right? Like Peter. Peter got religious. Peter wanted to be traditions. He was like, Peter didn't want to go and stay at a Gentile's house because he thought they were unclean. Well, that was a religious law, not a law of God, right? That was a religious law. And God said, what I make clean, Peter, whatever I make clean, you cannot call unclean. So if the Lord tells you to go and do something with somebody or in a situation so that you will have his plans and purposes go forth, but you want to use tradition. Well, I've never done that, God, you know, or, right. You want to get all religious about it. That's, that's, that's a different story. Okay. It's a different story, but he will never put you purposely into sin right into sin to accomplish a godly means will he use people around you will he he bring uh wealth of the wicked to transfer to the righteous yes you, you really have to use discernment okay but will he use unlikely people sure my neighbor behind me she doesn't believe in god she doesn't want anything to do with god but the lord sent her 
to help us with our horse Pungo so that he could accomplish what he wanted through Pungo's book. Right? God used Pharaoh for Joseph. Will he use unlikely people? Yes, he will. But he will never ask you to do something sinful. Did Joseph bow down to Pharaoh's gods? No. You see, there's a big difference. Okay, I don't know if that helps you. Does anybody have any questions? Hmm? I want you guys to get out of these covenants that, um, you know, you are, that this is severed off you and you're not stuck on it. Okay. Now go to these places. I'm going to read this prayer. I'm trying to pull it up right now so I can read it to you. Hang on. Any questions, anybody? Hmm? Hang on, I got to pull this up so I can read this to you, and then we're going to put it where you guys can speak it and say it. For some reason, my, my computer is, is acting slow. I apologize. Let's get any final questions that we have here. Does this help somebody today? I'll have this to where you can print it out as well, that you'll be able to print it out and you'll be able to, you know, sit down with your husband and speak it or your wife. Uh, here we go. Renouncing unholy covenants. All right. Father God, I come before you to confirm by faith that I stand on and agree with your word now fully according to Galatians 2.20 that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Therefore, Father God, my testimony is this. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, I am redeemed, and you are redeemed, out of the hand of the devil, spirit, soul, and body. I belong, and you belong to Jesus Christ, sanctified and set apart to you, Father God, by the blood of Jesus. That's our new covenant. We have to confirm that covenant through the blood. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood speaks for me and you. Before our Father God, night and day on the mercy seat. Thank you, Father, for grace and mercy. Now, this is the renounce of, of the co uh, any unholy covenants. Father God, we come before you and we renounce, rebuke, revoke, and cancel all unholy covenants we have ever made in our life and in the lives of our ancestors going all the way back to Adam and Eve and Jesus name. We repent father God for these unholy covenants in our life and in our ancestors lives and ask for your grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, wash away our sins with your blood and wash our ancestral bloodlines clean with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. We decree today the only covenant that we are in from this day forward is one Holy covenant with almighty God through the blood 
of Jesus Christ. We also decree this over our bloodlines in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask that all records of unholy covenants be wiped off our record books and the record books of our ancestors in the courts of heaven by the blood of Jesus and remember no more for your sake, God. Why for his sake? So that he could begin to bring everything forth that he's been wanting you to do. That's written in your destiny. That's written in your scroll. So his plans and purposes can go forth in you and your household. In Jesus name, we ask that the new holy covenant that we have with you, Father God, through Jesus Christ is written and decreed in our record books in heaven. And this record of repentance is made available for all of our future appearances before you, God. In your holy courts, Father, from this day forward, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, let me tell you something. Oh, well, Anna Marie, do I have a book in heaven? Do I have a scroll in heaven? Yes, it's in the Bible several times. About you have a book, you have a book, you have a book, you have a book. Elijah saw scrolls coming down. The Lord told him to eat them. When Peter had the vision, it came down like a scroll that was written and unscrolled before him. And the, 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 the animals that he was not supposed to eat before because of religion, because of Jewish law, the Lord said, kill and eat, Peter. I have made this clean. I have written this in your scroll. What the Lord has made clean, it's clean. It's done. It's written. That's why we have to go by the word of God and we have to go also go by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Say, what do you say, God? Now, I'm going to give this prayer to all of you. It's going to be made available. And I want you guys to have it. And I want you guys to be free of all this stuff. I know that the transference of wealth is happening. That God is going to bring you after you sever all these unholy covenants and you become a one holy covenant with him. God is going to start bringing you the transference of wealth. Right? blessings, abundance to begin to do the work that he's called you to do. The wealth may come from unlikely places. Why? Because he's stripping it from the wicked and giving it to the righteous. Those who are in covenant with him, those who have dedicated everything that they're doing to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Priyanka, some points might not be in her memory. Do you have any topics in lists? Jesus did not give out bullet points to his apostles, Perianka, and I say this with love. Coach Anna Marie is saying this with love to all of you. When I come here to preach, okay, and teach, a lot of times I don't give you bullet points. I don't give you a worksheet that says here, right? Jesus didn't give out bullet points and worksheets. He expected his apostles and his disciples to write it down. So this is being recorded. You can come back and write down these bullet points and write them down. And it's scientifically proven, and God designed you this way, that when you write something and you type something, the nerve endings on your fingers send a message up to your brain and create a new um, neuron in your brain for that to be of memory. So you're actually going to remember something when you type it or you write it even better than when you hear it. Why? Because you're called to this to, to learn. You're called to this to write it down. Now, I am giving you some written prayers, and I'm giving you places to go to these written prayers. I am giving you those, okay? Freely I receive, freely I give. I'm giving you the prayer. But if you need bullet points, Watch this and write it down. Jesus expected his followers to write things down. He didn't give them written bullet points. 
and say, okay, uh, Andrew and uh, um, you guys get, grab a bunch of people, pick up these worksheets that we just ran on the copier in uh, Bethesda and, um, you know, Make sure everybody has a worksheet and bullet points in the crowd of 5,000. Then we'll give them loaves and fishes. But get their bullet points passed out to them first. <laughs> no, he expected people to write it down. He, ex he, he expected scribes to be there. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to his apostles to make sure they remembered everything. So if you can't remember what is being taught to you here, write it down and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. That's the way Jesus did, and that's the way I teach. Now, when I give classes, when I have specific classes that you purchase, or you purchase a book from me, or you purchase a teaching from me, that I will give you bullet points, and I will give you worksheets, and I will give you downloads. This is what I give you for free. Hallelujah. This hat, this love hat, I got, I got this at the Christian bookstore um, in Chesapeake, Virginia. But I do have hats that people make for me. Got these hats, Praise Day and stuff like that. We're gonna, we're gonna get some hats made for y'all. Okay. Any questions before we sign off? How do you subscribe by email? You go to AnnaMarieStrawhand.com. You go to contact, you say, uh, Anna Marie, make sure I'm on your email list. Okay. Or on my homepage at AnnaMarieStrawhand.com, I got a free download for your free um, vision board cutouts, and you'll automatically join my email list that way. Okay. Poochie Lou has, has, has put up a lot of information for you guys. Okay. So I will also post this prayer on my website under prayers as well. So there'll be lots of places for you to receive this. Okay. God bless you. I love you. And remember all of heaven is cheering you on. God wants you to throw off, right? Read Hebrews 11 and 12. Hebrews 11 and 12 says, throw off all encumberments. So you can speed up. What are some of these encumberments? Encumberments. Unholy, ungodly co covenants, right? We want to, we, we don't want to be encumbered. And we don't be, want to be in any covenants that are not of God, that are holding us back and slowing us down. we got to finish this race strong because a cloud of witnesses is cheering us on. They're all cheering us on. We are the heroes of the faith now. Abraham was a hero of the faith. We are a hero of the faith. We are of a priestly, kingly order of Melchizedek for ministry, for marketplace, for all the mountains of influence. It's time for us to go, 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 and throw off anything that's holding us back or weighing us down. Woohoo! I'm cheering you on, my friends. I love you. God bless you. Receive this today and know that your glorious uh, assignment, your, your everything that God has called you to do has been waiting to be released from your scroll so you can be like fast out of the box. But we got to get rid of anything that uh, is, is not of God in our lives. Anything, any, and a holy covenants. Right? Amen. All right, I love y'all. God bless you. I'll see you Friday. Friday, we have praise reports, prayer requests, and communion. Reinstating our covenant with God through communion. All right? So come back on Friday, and I'll pray for you. We'll share our praise reports, and we'll take communion together. I've got a lunch date with my hubby for our 20th wedding anniversary. And we're going to go and have a little picnic together because we can't go to a restaurant because of, you know, <laughs> because of the quarantine. Oh, no restaurants, but that's okay because our first day was at Waffle House. And so as soon as this thing lifts, we're going to go to Waffle House and celebrate. So today we're going to have a little picnic. I'm going to go grab some sandwiches from the, we have a gas station down the street and they have a little deli and they make really good sandwiches. So we're going to go grab some of those, hang out in Mike's garage and celebrate our 20th anniversary in one holy covenant with God. Hallelujah. I love you all. God bless you. I'll see you Friday. Mwah!